Hey, what's up guys, GK here. Thanks to Ahmed for asking me to create a video on what are the most important AWS services that you can expect in an AWS interview. So in this video, I'm going to go over the most important services that you must prepare when you go for, it, when you go for an AWS interview. And I'm going to go through why those services are important and what you can expect in interview around those services. So before I go into the content of this video, I have a small announcement that I would like to make is that I have a Facebook page right now uh, where you can like the page because I'm going to give you some important cloud questions, cloud related questions and as well as DevOps related questions uh, based on my experience and, and you can reach out to me on that page. So let's start discussing about these services. Now as you join a company or when a, co when a company is interviewing you for an AWS cloud engineer or an architect, think of that company is trying to migrate their applications to cloud, right? So most of the time, uh, most of the big enterprises, again, it depends on the maturity curve of the company, but most of the big enterprises, they start with migrating their application uh, by lifting their application from on-prem to AWS. So the most important service for them to facilitate that is EC2 because you have to create a VM. So EC2 is so important that, you know, you have to understand EC2 in the terms of how you create EC2s so what are the different types of uh, machine types of EC2s like M2s or why would you have to choose M2 versus why would you have to choose T3 CPU based, memory based or if your application is using machine learning maybe um, you know GPU based. These questions you can expect in the interview and how you can use EC2s to mount the volumes, I mean use EBS volumes, um, expand the EBS volumes and how you can scale. So coming to the next section is, you know, auto scaling is important as a service because if you have EC2s, if you want to scale them, you know, you have to use auto scaling. So these two are important. Now, let's say you have an EC2, you have your application, but you want to connect to the database. That's when we're going to talk about the RDS. Now RDS is another important service that you have to practice a lot uh, in the terms of how you can connect to RDS uh, from your client, you know, how you can run the queries, or uh, what is the difference between a normal RDS versus Aurora based uh, Postgres. You know, these things are important uh, to practice. So RDS is another important service, the most important service after EC2. Now the third thing is uh, the data is so important as you have to migrate the data from on-prem to uh, AWS, right? So how would you migrate? You have to migrate by using um, you know, a service that you can facilitate when you're migrating huge terabytes of data. So that important service is called S3. Now, S3, the way you want to approach to that is how you want to create the S3 buckets, how you want to, you know, understand the encryption part of S3 as well, not to the level of how you want to create the KMS keys and those things, because generally in companies, there are teams who manage that. But for you um, as a engineer or as a developer, you want to create S3 bucket, you, you know, you want to play around with S3 objects and understand the bucket policy and, you know, KMS of S3. So these things are very important in the terms of S3. And S3 is a fairly easy service to play around with. So now the fourth important service is uh, the load balancer. The load balancer is important because when you have an application in cloud, you want to balance that. And if you don't have a on-prem load balancer, you have to use, you know, application ALB based load balancer or an ELB based load balancer, either it is layer four or layer seven. So load balancer is another important service that you want to practice. Now let's say you have your application running now. So you have your EC2, you know, you have practiced RDS and you have practiced S3. And uh, you know you know how to create EBS volumes, auto scaling. These these things are covered, and you are very well versed with all these services. Now the additional services that you can spend some time to understand are, for instance, SNS. If you want to send a notification to your team members, you know SNS is commonly used, and Lambda is one service which is which is uh, quite popular these days uh, because of you know its serverless nature, and you know you can create services inside Lambda without maintaining any instance. So that's important service as well. Now, if you're trying to apply for a company, they usually mention what services they expect from you. Uh, for instance, if, if that company is more um, on Docker containers, right? And then if you see such kind of keywords in the job description, then I would highly recommend you to practice Fargate and the EKS as well. Now, the other things that you want to have overall understanding, like you don't have to go in depth into the service, but the overall understanding 
is understanding the concepts of VPC, security groups, and IAM. You know, IAM is commonly used. I mean, everybody uses IAM, but you most of the time would not manage IAM directly because they, you have a security team who manages IAM. But for you as an engineer or, or an, as, a, as an architect, um, you have to make sure that you know you know a fair bit of uh, IAM. As you create instances, you create instance profiles. You know, how, what is the difference between IAM role versus an instance profile that is attached to an EC2 instance? So these things are important too. So if you are trying to join a startup company and if they are trying to create an application as a greenfield application, meaning that they are developing and doing everything on cloud, then generally they would use, they would try to prefer a pass-based solution, like pass-based solution, something like Elastic Beanstalk. So try to practice few scenarios on Elastic Beanstalk. That will be very helpful. So along with these services, the other two underrated services, but you know, more often than not, they are asked in the interviews. The, these two services are called CloudFormation and uh, CloudWatch or CloudTrail Logs. So the reason why, why CloudFormation is so important because when you create these services on cloud, you cannot do it manually. And you know, it's impossible for you to manage these services or creation of these services manually. So that's why you have to learn CloudFormation. You have to be very good with CloudFormation in the terms of um, how you write the CloudFormation template. You know, how you write, uh, how you manage the parameters, uh, nested stacks, how you manage the stacks, you know, uh, how you automate all those things. So CloudFormation is very important. And the reason CloudWatch and CloudTrail are important because uh, as, a, as an engineer, you have to know how you want to debug in cloud. And since these are the logging services, you know, CloudWatch being a logging service for an application and CloudTrail being, you know, uh, a logging service for your uh, services level. For instance, you know, if, if an application is down, you would like to uh, look for the logs in the CloudWatch or if a service level issues are happening in the cloud then you would go to the CloudTrail and you have to know how to look through the logs in the CloudWatch and you know and as well as in, in CloudTrail. So with that these are the most commonly used services and these are the most commonly asked services in the interview. There are many other services as well that again depends on what company is expecting you know you don't have to go through all of them but at least start with these things practice them and then decide on you know what uh, the market is demanding you to prepare i hope uh, this video was helpful for you all uh, for people who are trying to prepare for aws interviews and like i've said you know i'm going to come up with some interview questions and post uh, questions based on the scenarios in my facebook page so do like it there and then you can always reach out to me in the facebook with that uh, thank you all for watching my video and if you like click on the like button and thanks for watching bye